Hello, I took a bit of a break just because I was too lazy to edit videos. I don't really do skincare videos, like skincare focus videos lately. And someone, my sister told me that someone asked for me to do an updated skincare routine video. So I kind of have two skincare routines. One skincare routine, which is the one you often see me do in videos, whether it's doing my own makeup or other people's makeup, is the, um, these ones, the, uh, Begins vegan line. I really like it because, um, it really, as, besides being super moisturizing, really balancing the skin, it really prepares the skin for makeup. It's not to say that you can't just use that if you're not a makeup wearer. Like, that stuff I will use even if I'm not wearing makeup because it's, it's good skincare. But, uh, I do kind of have like a slightly, a slightly, it's a completely different, like a different routine at night just because, um, I know I'm not going to be wearing makeup, obviously, because it's nighttime. And I feel like, I almost feel like this routine might be a little bit too rich for because I don't like to have the skin super oily and like greasy before makeup because it makes the makeup slide around. Um, I like to have like a junjunan finish to the skin when I do skin prep before makeup. I think it's not really like that. I think it's definitely more moisture focused. You can actually kind of consider all this stuff like my uh, favorites of 2022 because I tried quite a many things, quite a many things, quite a many thing during 2022 and I guess these are the ones where I've either repurchased them more than once or I'm like this is definitely the one thing or things that I would recommend to people if they had asked me like oh what do you use for your skincare. I'm going to be talking about a lot of different types of skincare from like cleansing to moisturizing to treatments so um, I'll leave like kind of like time stamps below so you can just skip around uh, but I'm basically just going to go in order of like the steps that I would do. We're going to start off with cleanser. Now if I have point makeup you can use these two to remove like mascara, eyeshadow, lip colors or whatever. Uh, but the idea of really rubbing around my eyes and mouth to try and get point makeup off, because usually eyeshadow and mascara and lip colors are the hardest to get off as opposed to the skin where it's kind of just like, it just comes off. So to completely just avoid that struggle, um, I always use these, uh, the perfect cleansing oil pads. If you've been to Korea, you kind of know this because it has this, I feel like it's well known for this thing, this illustration. They used to be in kind of like towelette looking little plastic things but now they came out with like this new just jumbo like tub kind of like toner pads this is still the same kind of pad in there but now it comes in this and you get more it's like that kind of like thin oily kind of eye lip remover but it's just oh, so easy without even having to rub too hard, I just kind of press into the eye and I wipe away and uh, it does its job. And because I remove my point makeup with that, uh, when I go in with my cleansing balm and oil, I don't have to really go around my eyes and lips. If for some reason I have like a lot of mascara, which is very common for me, I do use a separate mascara removers. I've tried several of them and they're all kind of the same to me because they all do the same job. But this one is from Heroin Make. It's a Japanese one, but they come like this. It basically just looks like a mascara wand. It's also kind of like an oily, formula, you run this through your mascara, and then I would use this and it really makes it easy to come off. But because this does such a good job already, I don't often use this, only if I really want to avoid any extra rubbing around my eyes. But to be honest, this in itself is just fine. This cleansing balm, like, favorite. This is probably like my fourth bottle and I'm very lucky because you guys know I work with stylekorean.com and whenever I go to their company to film shit with Eddie, I just take of these. But definitely I bought on my own, I bought this like several times already. The Hymish All Clean Balm. This is actually the Mandarin version. The original version is good as well, but this is, this one came out recently and they sent this to me. So I've been using this one. Really great cleansing balm. It's really malleable, not too thick. I've tried balms that are way too thick uh, that just feel really hard and oily, but it's really easy to melt down. It's vegan, I believe. One of the great things I like about this is that if it does get in my eye, it doesn't leave, the, like it doesn't sting and it doesn't leave that weird foggy film over the eyes, which is like one of my priorities when it comes to finding a good cleansing balm. Sometimes if I'm not feeling like a cleansing balm, I do reach for a cleansing oil. I often use these in the morning as well. I've gone through many and a lot of them are fine, but for me, especially since I know I'm just going to be washing and it's going to go down the drain, but I tend to go back to this one um, because it's easily available at Olive Young and I can just pick it up. But the Manyo Pure Cleansing Oil, uh, they often come in like these big bottles, so these last me a pretty decent amount of time. But I like that this isn't too thin and it's not too thick. If it's too thick, sometimes it's hard to get off. The thin cleansing oils are really good for exfoliating, like extra, like if you really massage into the skin, it really uh, removes blackheads from like your pores. It really picks up and like sloughs off any fine dead skin from your skin. But I find that if the cleansing oil is too thin, 
the cleansing action is a little bit too harsh. So I find that this is a good balance between thick and thin. Um, and it's really great at removing makeup. This one I also find that it, it doesn't like leave a nasty film in, in my in my eyes if it does get around there. <gasps> oh my god. I used to use these years ago and I kind of stopped. I don't know why, but I got back onto them and like obsessed. I've showed these on my channel years and years ago, but these cleansing sponges. They have these in Korea, but I always find the ones that they have in the Korean beauty road shop brands are always like the really thin, small ones. And I could never find the the large, like this size, like because the, these are like the thick ones and they just feel more comfortable to use on the skin. But uh, I went on AliExpress, which has been my obsession lately, and girl, I got a whole ass, like literally just go in there. You can get a whole ass, like all this shit for like not even... Dude, it wasn't even five, it was like five, ten, not even five, ten dollars. I guess because Korea is pretty close to China, it didn't take so long to get to me. But girl, it's like the best investment ever because ugh, basically just wet them. And um, after I finish using my cleansing balm or cleansing oil, you know how you add a little bit of water, it turns milky. I literally just use this to wipe it away. Fantastic thing about this is one, you know, you're getting all the extra residue off. And two, I want to say to some degree, it almost has a little bit of exfoliation but when i say exfoliation it almost sounds like you're like scratching your skin but i don't really think that's the case because um it's different from using like a you know those towels or something to like exfoliate your skin this is completely smooth and soft but i find that it just makes the skin so much smoother after using this to wipe my face of the cleanser i also love in the morning um because i often use my lip mask at night. I normally use a wet wipe to remove my lip mask but while I'm removing my cleanser I also remove my lip mask with this in the morning and not only is it more gentle it does such a better job at it and uh, it really fucking gets everything off and you'll notice especially the first time you use this your skin almost has like this glossy look to it because it's just so smooth but at the same time it, it's so gentle because like it's like this really smooth non-rough sponge. I have no idea. Oh it also a really fantastic plus of this is that because it's a sponge, as you're wiping, it literally sucks up the water from your skin. So you don't have to use a dirty towel to wipe your face down or even like, you know, some people use t-shirts. Like this does everything for you. It removes the cleanser and it leaves your skin dry and soft and everything. So I can't think of anything bad about this. I guess the only thing is like, I guess it might be unhygienic. I don't, I don't know. You'll know when it's like, definitely you need to change it. But I feel like you can kind of just after like several uses, you can just put it into one of these delicate bags. And then at the end of the week or whenever, or whenever you change a bunch of them, you can just throw it in the washer and then use them again. That's what I do with like my makeup puff. Actually, this is my makeup puff, uh, like little washer. I put all my dirty makeup puffs in here and I just throw them in the washer and they're, they're clean. So you can also do that with it, with the cleansing sponges, but definitely a must have. If you're going to take one thing away from this video, get these from AliExpress. I think they also have them on Amazon, but you can get way more for more for cheaper on AliExpress. 15 minutes and I've only been talking about cleansers. I'm still not done with cleansers because we're going on to cleansing foam because that's, that's removing the makeup. Now we're going to actually cleanse the skin. But actually what I was going to say is that because I feel like these do such a good job of cleansing the skin, and I'm using the sponge to remove it, a lot of times I don't even go with a cleanser, like a water-based cleanser afterwards, like a cleansing foam. And that might sound taboo, but if you have skin that reacts to a lot of cleansing, then if your skin is clean, it's clean, right? <laughs> In my opinion. But there are some cleansing foams that I use that I guess I could recommend. When I was really getting into this, I was like, why don't I try some of their cleansing foams from Hymish? So they have this one, the white clay foam. And to be honest, there's nothing hugely special about this, but it's one of those like, clay foam thing so that the clay in there is supposed to like suck the oil from your face but I just like how really thick and bouncy the foam comes out and I just find that um after cleansing my skin just feels more like plump and I don't want to say moist I know people are like oh my god my skin feels so moist after I use cleanser not my skin type. I just feel dry after I wash my face so I immediately go with skincare but with this compared to other foam cleansers this one definitely didn't leave me feeling as dry. It just felt really like plump my skin. And I guess I do feel the effects of like the white clay or whatever because my skin does feel more like cleaned out, I suppose. But um, yeah, I try to cleanse it for at least one minute and using this and I just love how comfortable and foamy the foam is. But if you have very extremely sensitive skin, to be honest, both of these I find are good for sensitive skin, but this one is definitely like, I only recently found this, but I like stole another bottle from Style Korean because it's so good. It's the skin. Technically, in Korean, it's called Chonsa 1004. Chonsa is also the word for angel, so skin angel. Skin Chonsa, which is cute. Madagascar Sensilla Ampil Foam. And you can basically just think of this as a creamy cleanser that has a serum in it. 
So with that, it's extremely gentle. Uh, if, this is actually the one I use in the, in the clip that I'm showing. It's really good because I feel like after the cleansing balm and cleansing or cleansing oil or whatever with that cleansing sponge, I don't need much after that. But if I'm really like, oh, I really want to cleanse my skin, this is gentle enough to give me that satisfaction of like, oh, the two-step cleansing process. And I find that in the morning, because I literally didn't do anything, I literally just slept, but I do want to cleanse my face because there is almost, because what my skin does is a little bit of oil will come out during the night and then it creates almost like a crusty layer on the skin. So usually, as we know, oil breaks up oil. So I'll tend to use this in the morning, but um, this I totally find usable in the morning as well. It just feels really creamy and moisturizing. And, I don't know, you know, it's, it's a great gentle cleanser. And I don't know if there's any effect from the serum, but I just find that it softens the cleansing process a lot, if that makes sense. Okay, last cleanser I'm gonna talk about, but I really want to mention this because uh, I did that a sponsored video with Isntree for their sunscreen uh, many months ago, but at the same time, they also sent me this one, which was new at the time. It's their Yam Root Vegan Milk Cleanser. And this one is basically a cleansing milk, right? Like that, but... What I always found that like in America, they have, if you like go on skincare forums or if you watch skincare YouTubers, they always talk about the, was it like the CeraVe? Like, you know, they have a bunch of like gentle cleansers, the ones that don't really foam. But I find that they make my skin sting. I don't know why. I think it might have something to do with like the alcohol in it or something, but I feel my skin burning when I'm using them. So I've always tried to get onto those cl gent gentle cleansers, but I just never could because after I wash it off, my skin is just like raw and red. So when I tried this, I was like, eh, I'm not gonna, eh. But I tried, it's, love this stuff. Although it's like a cleansing milk, I find it has really great slip and I find it easy to wash off. There's some cleansing milks I find that they're almost like greasy in a way. So it's like, I always feel like there's residue, but with this one, I don't really find that. It says there's pH 5.5 mild cleansing, rich in creamy texture, protects skin barrier. So I guess that's good. I'm always finding some way to compromise my skin barrier, but this one, if you have extremely sensitive skin and you really can't, use too much, this is also a really great option. Um, in fact, I'll probably recommend this the most if you truly feel like you have like anything you use is just like redness, redness, redness. Okay, now let's do toner. To be honest, I really only have one toner besides the, the skin, the begins one that I always use. I talked about this many times. It's the Tony Molly Vegan Label Ceramide Mochi Common Toner. Originally, their mochi, the original Ceramide Mochi Toner was super popular, but they made a vegan version. It still gives you that mochi feeling skin, but this is definitely a different formula, obviously, because it's vegan. It's much, much thicker. So I don't necessarily find it a pleasure to apply in the morning, but what I love to do with this, I take these Philly Millie self skin pads, these refills. This is the fit version. So the ones that you can, the ones that are really thin that you can use as mini masks. Philly Millie uh, sell the container that you can use these for but this is a different this is a much bigger one so basically i put them in there and i literally just dump this shit in there yep that's about that much and i give it some time i usually let it sit overnight because overnight the, the cleansing pads suck everything up for me toner is so important because it gives you that initial boost of moisture to help everything else kind of absorb if i just cleanse and just use like went in with like a moisturizer i find that it's harder to spread and i've used this analogy many times but it's like uh when you have a dry sponge like it, that you use to wash the dishes you know when you have to use it like all day it's like completely dry so you run it under water it takes a little bit of time for it to soak up water that's how i kind of see skin so this toner stage is kind of like the first step in the moisture process i guess so with this i take one pad wipe it all over and then i stick it to my forehead and then i take two more and i leave it on my face now this is a technique i tend to use if i'm doing someone else's makeup and i want to do their eye makeup first or usually i'll do this at night um and it real i swear to god I've tried it with other toners and uh, there was another toner I was using that I just needed to use up. So I dumped that shit in here. But honestly, I prefer the way the mochi, the vegan mochi toner or whatever from Tony Mali, the effect that it has. If you have like rosacea or redness, um, it can get really exasperated if you're not properly moisturizing. But I've noticed with skin types like that, just using a heavy cream, it will make it worse. I don't know why. So it's really important to layer moisture when you have like redness or rosacea. And I feel like this is the perfect first step because as it's sitting on my skin, I find it really cools it down. Temperature of the skin is extremely important as well, right? So using it, using the pads on my skin really helps cool down, calm the redness and recharge my skin with moisture. I'll put them on and I'll tend to like do something else, like play a game or editing. I'll basically use it until it's like dried up. And because the pads are so thin, I don't find that they take so, so long to absorb completely, maybe like max 
maybe 10 minutes when they're easily peelable or they just kind of fall off. That's when I go to my next step. But honestly, I highly recommend this. If you can go to a Tony Molly store, there's not very many these days, but if you can go to one, if you can get the big bottle, I would definitely get that one. And also these DIY pad, cotton pad things. Definitely recommend these. There's a lot of other different brands that have these sorts of things, but I find that these are the thinnest. So they make really great, um, you know, you don't have to use them as a face mask. You can literally just use it as your toner so you can kind of wipe around. But um, yeah, I feel like this, it's a great like two in one, I guess. If I'm not using that, um, this one, I don't really find it as a necessary step to be honest, but I like to use it just cause maybe I want to use, have like my toner step, but I don't want to like rub my face or anything for some reason. To be honest, this whole brand in general is like, if you need moisture, like this is the brand to go to, or you have like a compromised skin barrier or whatever. Estra is the one. It's a very popular brand in Olive Young, but the Estra, Ato Barrier 365 Cream Mist. There was actually a point in time in K-Beauty where cream cream mists were becoming super popular. They're basically just mists but much thicker and provide more moisture than just like your basic watery feeling mist. Like it actually, when it evaporates, it almost feels like your skin gets drier, but this one, it's much thicker. I kind of almost use this as a replacement step for toner. Um, I just see it as like my first step of like moisture, especially if I'm right out of the shower or I just finished cleansing my face, like just spray my face with this and I feel like alive again. I really want to recommend this, but also I wouldn't say it's like the most necessary thing. Estra is available on Amazon. When I was in America, I was like, oh my God, I'm running out of Estra, but I actually have it on Amazon and uh, I have Prime, so it came to me like in a day. Estra is not the cheapest brand, but I find that because you need so little of all this stuff, you really just need like one, two, three. And I find that that's totally sufficient. Also with like the essence and like the moisturizer, you need such little product. They really last you a while. So after the cream mist, I'll use the Otto 365 Hydro Essence. It says essence, but usually what you would think of essence is like those really watery, almost toner feeling things like the SK2 or like the Neogen one. There's the fucking Misha has one. A lot of lots of brands of essences, but this one, the texture is actually more a cross between it's almost like a serum feeling i think that's why i said this one isn't necessary necessary for the skincare routine because i could totally use this as a first step to kind of like as the first layer of my moisture because it's so thin but it's really moisturizing i tend to wear makeup often so i just find that the my nighttime routine is definitely just to recharge the moisture on my skin because my skin gets very red if i'm lacking moisture it's really honestly the mist the essence are just steps in like the layering process, right? Um, and like I said already, you don't need a lot for this one. Like one or two pumps is totally enough. And I just put a thin layer and I um, pat it in. And the thing is, the more product you use, the longer it takes to absorb. And you, the thing is, you don't need that much product for um, each step. So especially if you're layering already, I guess if you're only using one thing, yeah, you can definitely use a, a few more pumps, but I, this lasts me forever, I swear. Now, normally I would just go straight into the moisturizer, but this is kind of like the step that if I do have like a, skincare product that's more of like a treatment product, then I'll probably use it at this step. So I figured I would mention it here. Retinol has become a thing that's very popular in Korea now. Uh, retinol has been a thing in America for a long time, but uh, Koreans are start just starting to get into it. But the Mamonde Retinol Ampule Toner, if you find that your skin, like let's say you've always been good about your moisturizing, right? But you're starting to feel like your skin's feeling a little dull or when you're like applying your moisturizer, it just feels like there's like, it's rough, right? This almost feels just like this. Uh, it's toner, but it's much thicker than a toner. It's almost like a, again, like a serum, ample essence type of thing. I swear to God, when you first use this, your skin is like so fucking baby smooth in the next morning because of the retinol. Now, when I first used it, I was like, oh my fucking God, I'm so, I look so good. But then I went overboard and my skin so, turned so raw and red. So you kind of want to, use it only once every like people will say like once or twice a week or whatever. just i do it based on my the condition of my skin if i find that my skin is feeling thick enough that day for me to handle it um i'll use it but if my skin is feeling thin and like raw and red obviously i'm not going to use it right on the website they say you can use it several different ways you can use it as just your toner like right after you cleanse just apply this on your face or put some on a cotton pad like the ones i showed you earlier and just stick them on your face i feel like that might be a little bit overboard because it is retinol actually to be honest i wouldn't use it i'd probably use this as like my first step like after my cleansing but yeah, I think I would mention this because I think it's such a great product. And there's also collagen, vitamin C, hyaluronic acid. So it's a little bit easier than what I'm going to talk about next, which is tretin, tretinoin. Tretinoin, I'm not going to talk very much about, but 
because you need a prescription to get this, but I got this while I was in America. I was able to get a prescription for it and I bought this at CVS, like 30 bucks. Even back in the day, like when I was in high school, uh, I would go to the hospital on base and they would always just recommend tretinoin or prescribe tretinoin and was it benzol peroxide? So I would always, I'm very familiar with this, but always your skin has to go through that like purging period, I guess. I think the main thing originally was that it was supposed to help acne, but uh, over time, they found that it helps with skin texture, wrinkles. Technically, you're only, you're really supposed to see results after like six months to a year. But yeah, your skin's gonna be red and raw and nasty. Definitely, uh, if you can't get a prescription for this, I guess this would be some kind of alternative. So after all that treatment shit, now is for like the moisture. Now Estera, they have two, I guess, main moisturizing products. They have the Atoberia 365 Lotion and the Cream. To be honest, they do the exact same thing. It's just that textures are very, very slightly different. But if I'm gonna be completely honest with you, the result is basically the same, so couldn't go wrong with either. The lotion, I find that the texture is much more, it leaves your skin more chonjone and more of like a satin finish. I don't wanna say matte, it's not matte, it's like, not overly greasy, it's just satiny. So it leaves your skin just feeling really creamy, but not necessarily like glowing and shining. This though, it has actually little like um, spheres in there, which I think are supposed to do something. I don't know. Can you see that? It pretty much leaves almost exactly same finish, although it's slightly, the word I want to say is oily, but when you think of oily, you think of like greasy and gross and like, like you use a facial oil, but it's just slightly more of a, slip to it at the end, if that makes sense. If I'm really feeling dry, I'll layer them both. But again, I use such a tiny amount. A little bit goes such a long way. Even in the clip, I think I probably use too much of this. Because of all these steps, it spreads so easily, but it leaves me feeling super moisturized, right? If I'm not doing makeup during the day, I'll use this and there's sunscreen and done. And then this one I'll use mostly at night, but Many times I'll switch back and forth and I think of these as interchangeable. So yeah, I, I just like them both, but I figure I would show them. I have one last product I want to show. And this is really like, if I really fucked my skin up, like the other day I used, I have one of these things. I don't know if you guys have seen this before, probably, but these like water, like these vibrating, like you spray your face with water and you turn it on and like it uses sonic vibrations to like get shit out or whatever. Uh, I you like to use that around my nose. After my second nose job, stuff really starts to get stuck around my nose, but the shit really clears it out. So when I wear makeup the next day, it's so smooth around my nose. I used it, but I think I overused it the other day. It really left my skin raw and red. And in situations like that, I literally gently cleanse my face and I use this one product. It's the Aven Sickle, Sickle Fate? Cream Resistance. <laughs> this stuff. Very small bottle, but uh, this has lasted me. I mean, I don't use it very often, but I definitely think it's great to have in your skincare routine for if you really fuck your skin up. But it's extremely thick. It almost looks like paint almost. But I wash my face, like I said, very gently. And I literally just spread this all over my face. And the next day, if, if, it actually almost looks like a sunscreen because it almost leaves like this white cast. But after you blend it in, it almost like... It feels thick at the beginning, but the warmth of your skin heats it up and it almost like melts it down and it turns it into like this watery, creamy glow. Oh my God, the glow it gives you. Obviously, it doesn't matter because the whole point of it is to help heal your skin, but it does leave a really pretty glow on your face. Apparently, they say you can use it during the day as well, which if you're that bitch that just wants to use literally just one moisturizer from morning and night, you could probably use this. I just find it's too heavy for me for like during the day. I know there's this other one as well, La Roche-Posay, the Cicaplast Bomb B5 also quite popular. I, you'll often see these together being like compared or whatever, but I kind of like this one a little bit more just because I feel like this one's a little, it feels almost like silicone-y, almost like primer, which it's not bad, but I just find that, I don't know, I like this one a little bit more. But yeah, I think I, I found this through TikTok, I think. A TikTok that was on YouTube. Some girl like fucked her leg up, like the skin on her, like she burned or something, and she put this all over and it was like healed like the next day. I was like, oh shit. So I tried this and I wouldn't say my face is like completely like magically healed the next day, but it definitely rapidly heals my raw redness much faster. But that's basically my skincare routine. I hope you guys find that useful. I'll put a list everything down below. And uh, yeah, bye. <laughs>